Last night we looked at the impact of digital technology on the future of television. Well, tonight, a new world of filmmaking. Spencer Michaels has our report. Where are you going to be? Can, uh, can you sit up without doing back. all that right now? Well, no, no, I'd be up here. Okay, See, I, I, was gonna to, I need you to slide back. back, back. Yeah, In a tiny all, San Francisco all, backyard, all, filmmaker Rob Nilsson is directing two actors in a film called Scheme. It's about a homeless man and his father, a cop, and it's being produced for a fraction of the cost of a high-budget Hollywood we're film. Going, we're moving, so I'm going to probably keep this wide. Nilsson's cameraman is using a digital video camera, a DV cam that records images much like a computer does. The camera itself is cheaper than a traditional film camera and costs about a third that of a professional video camera. And the tape is cheap. Filming digitally encourages the spare approach, a far cry from the techniques of most movies or TV shows that employ legions of extras, stand-ins, gaffers, camera operators and assistants, caterers and makeup artists. For Nilsson, who follows the action through a monitor built into his goggles, the advantages of the new equipment amount to a revolution. Nowadays, having small little cameras to get you into every little nook and cranny without having to worry about a whole lot of lights and a big crew and a big truck. Cheapness, accessibility, and I, I contend that it's a more intimate medium. And action. Nielsen says it works well for his style of filmmaking, where the focus is on the actor's spontaneity rather than special effects. A host of filmmakers like Nielsen are using the new technology to produce hundreds of new films and documentaries that would never have been made otherwise, because now the filmmakers can afford to experiment. In terms of its cheapness for young, young people starting out, or even old people still, still with a fire.